All right, let's take a look at the solar panels out here in my backyard, small suburbia lot. <laughs> Not a lot of room to work with, but it works. This is the main array, 2,400 watts, and it consists of 24 panels. Got them wired in series, 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 four series in parallel. And running about 95 volts on a about a hundred foot run into the garage electronics used all hardened bolts super strut concrete precision grout to hold that up it's been through two tornado seasons and uh, it performs great got two inline fuses 30 amp because the overall power does not go above 25 amps come through there but the solar chargers converted up to shoot 70 plus amps the small right down here that's for my portable solar generator in the house and I'll show you that in a sec I built this 1200 watt array last spring and it runs really good too um, can't go above two stories in the city uh, with HOA laws too so kept it kind of low but it actually this is a really great position for these it's not a tracking system but I use super strut precision grout stockade posts <laughs> it's not going anywhere I've had 75 mile an hour winds back here and the thing doesn't even budge used all hardened hardware to hold these in place too so buried cable dual fuses this is a series series system for high voltage works good I redid this pergola last year and put these three panels on here these are 435 watt throwaways that I got online and uh, they don't have any frames so I just built them wired them in parallel, fused them, bracketed them down, been through a couple of tornado seasons too. No problems, no problems. This little system here, this micro solar generator, I absolutely love this system. It's got a 100 watt solar panel and I'm gonna be putting another 100 watt solar panel on brackets right up here, probably today. So I have 200 watts going into this box here and that runs my lights and the solar pond pump and right now uh, I'm not making enough voltage well the cutoff is at 12 volts on the load so what happens is if the batteries get down to 12 volts I about 50% state of charge shuts the system down let's get in here a little bit close and I'll show you all right I opened up this little box here it's just an ammo can you can get online put a switch here meter I also got a switch on the light up here too but this is just a little hompy Renogy PWM solar charger got it all fused a couple of AGM batteries in here for about 36 amp hours screwdriver if I need it watertight real good been through several rainstorms but bone dry Using landscaping wire. Works good. Works real good. Right, let's go inside. Alright, this is my 24 volt transportable solar generator box. Made it look eh, pseudo military a little bit. Um, did several videos on this box, but I'm not going to get into great detail with this. But it consists of four Trojan Overdrive 31 AGM batteries, Go Power 1500 watt, Pure Sine Wave Inverter, EP Ever MPPT solar charger with MT5 meter, and all the goodies. Smoke detector, <laughs> little light up here. Very safe.
as I said before, you can uh, go on my channel and, and check out the other videos on this dog. But this essentially is a one-room type generator. Use it for living room TV, stereo, that type of stuff for now. It won't turn on the air conditioner though. So this thing doesn't have a really high, you know, initial turn on peak performance thing. So, yeah, it still works great though. Really good inverter overall. All right, this is one of my newer creations, another very portable solar generator box with one Trojan 31 AGM. 12 volt battery in there. This thing works absolutely wonderful. Got a 600 watt Ames Power Pure Sine Wave inverter. Let me turn it on here. Okay. I use this PWM solar charger and also there's a fan right here for cooling. It's a USB fan. I did a lot of videos on this on my channel, but uh, I like this part right here. I fabricated this myself. Access hole. <laughs> I'm charging it right now with a battery tender junior. Just plug it in. Good to go. Oh yeah, one side note. This right here will power my deep freezer refrigerator conversion. I put a digital thermostat, wired it into the compressor. This now serves as a refrigerator. Or you can use it as a deep freezer. Just turn the temperature down. Got it set at 34 degrees. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It'll run it. All right, on this portion of the video, this is my main home solar system here. About know, two months ago or so, uh, I rewired everything. And all the PV feeder is now in conduit for safety. Redid all the wiring. I had a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo wiring up here. That's all cleaned up. In here. All right, the way this system works is I've got those three arrays back there. And I've got three solar charge controllers. This is a 24 volt off grid system. Circuit breaker right there with the DC disconnect box. I've got two legs of 120 volts coming out through the square D box, one for the local outlet, and then one shooting over here to the ProTrans six circuit transfer panel. And what this circuit panel does over here is in between the main service panel. So I essentially take six circuits off the main service panel and use solar power to energize and feed the house circuits. Works absolutely great. Been doing this for, well, about two and a half years. Uh, no issues. The electrician is going to come out and do some stuff here, hopefully this week, if, I, if he can fit me in. And also look over the system again. But, uh, yeah, much happier. I've been at this for three plus years. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with what I got going on right now. So I got 4,905 watts coming in here. Charges the batteries, which consist of 12 Trojan L16EACs for a total of 1,100 amp hours at a 24 volt rate. These are flooded. They do require maintenance, you know, about once a month. I just write everything down on an inspection tag there every time I go in there. They use about, I don't know, maybe about three, three, fourths, three quarters of a gallon every month of distilled water, if that. But maintenance is really easy 
and I designed these cabinet thing, shelf, whatever you want to call them, for ease of maintenance. You just pull them in, pull them out. Got them latched there. So it makes it really easy. These are Blue Sea Systems bus bars. It's a, uh, what do you call that? Whiz Bang Jr. There. I've got the negatives from the solar chargers coming in on a bus bar here and then going down to the batteries. Outback Power VFX 3524 pure sine wave inverter with a lot of headroom. This thing is a beast. Thing is a beast. Runs much better in this configuration now too. Much cooler. Everything's running cooler this year too. Got the fan on there and all that jazz. Maintenance laptop out here, which is also a touch screen. Well, maybe. <laughs> you get the idea. Let's see what else we can talk about. Oh, yeah. The uh, DC disconnect box. These are Carling panel mount C series breakers. I will never use a DIN rail again in my life. But these are rated for both AC and DC. And this is what the company uses for their product, for their combiners and disconnect boxes and all that stuff. So that's what they recommended. big 250 on here. I also have a fuse. So I have the inverter protected by this and a 200 amp ANL fuse down here too. Double protection like wearing two condoms. These are all Carling C-Series panel mount breakers. Very good. Pricey too. But darn worth it. here fabricated this little protection thing because there's voltage on here that's one thing I still need to do is get an outside combiner box so I can do a kill switch I haven't gotten to it yet but the way these breakers are stamped you got load right here see so that's what I did so the way I wired this is per what the circuit breakers say which is fine and believe me I went through some companies and engineers said hey this is the way I'm doing it. and they said oh that's great that's fine and had it all looked over and these are electrically isolated too I can turn the inverter off these will stay on because the lines are attached right there all NEC compliant THHN wire except for the 4 out welding cable which in time will be corrected. Ground bus up here. All torqued. Not over torqued, let's put it that way. <laughs> Using a cable channel with slots for air cooling. Okay. And let's take a look at the Protran. Over here. Let me turn the light on so we can see what the hell's going on. This is just essentially a generator transfer switch, but I'm using solar power instead of a generator. This shows all the power that's going in there too. Works out absolutely flawlessly. This has been in use for, well, about two years plus. So, there you have it. Everything's running well. Made 22 plus kilowatt hours yesterday. And the power is just coming up this morning because it's very early. So, the system's waking up. I'm not inverting at this time because I didn't. Um, Got to get the voltage up. Start making power. So, there you have it. Clean, green running machine. Very happy with it.
Better airflow down here with the batteries, spacing and cooling. Garage is vented with dual 100 watt fans up here. So for about three months out of the year, it gets pretty warm in here, but it's still within specs. And I've contacted Trojan, sent them pictures of how I've got this set up, and they're like, that's fine, you're good. So there you have it.